Hi, Peter Charles here at Fly Fly Fishing. And you notice no rod today, no waders. What we're going to do is we're going to look at this creek and the water where trout are likely to sit, where they're likely to feed, where they're likely to rest. We're going to look at how to read water. And that is often the most difficult thing for a newcomer to the sport to be able to do. We think of casting being the problem, but no, it's usually understanding where the fish are. So if the fish are not showing themselves, we have to go find them. And I'm not going to look at every kind of uh, situation out there, but I'm going to look at a few. And that should get you started on some of the best places to look for fish. So, let's get started. Okay, here I'm just showing you a view down the creek. There's a large bend down there, and you can see the current flowing around it. And then you've got a, a series of pools uh, with riffle water in between. This is lovely structure. Uh, the fish will be sitting in the, uh, both in the heads and the tail outs, and plus you might find them in deeper water where there's cover in the slower pools. Uh, if there was a hatch going on, you would see this stretch come alive with fish because you know, there, there are places for both small and large fish down this stretch. Uh, so I, I would definitely you know, look at working a dry fly upstream here with a hatch. It, with a nymph, I would, you know, under an indicator, I'd start at the top end and work all of those runs. With contact nymphing, I'd probably work my way up. Streamers, I'd definitely work my way down through this water. And uh, I would, you know, work with mostly smaller streamers in an intermediate line. You wouldn't need a lot of uh, sink right here. You just need to get the fly down a bit. And I'd probably work with an unweighted small streamer. Here we have a slow glide uh, just upstream of us here. And it works down through that boulder. And you can see the current sort of turns into a V that current right there where that V is located it's often a great place for smaller fish to sit in that softer water and that V funnels food to them but this flat up here be surprised uh, you wouldn't think it being so featureless there probably wouldn't be very much in the way of fish in there but if there was a hatch coming off you'd be surprised how many rises you would see in a, a glide like that um, Best fish with dry flies, uh, a little bit more of a challenge with wets and streamers, but it can be done as well. Nymphing, it's going to be a little slow. You definitely would want to use an indicator, uh, and you just look for the deepest seam. Probably off the left here, where we see a little bit of uh, disturbance on the surface of the water, indicating a bit more current, and there's some depth there as well. So I'd certainly look at that. Okay, here we have uh, the creek flowing down, a nice little run there. You can see there's a sweeper. And then as we come through here, this is all undercut bank under here. And you've got some tree roots in there. That water's fairly deep, and it's right next to that fast current. But, you know, the water in that the bank is fairly slow. So a large fish could sit in there and uh, move out into the faster current to feed and then move back in when they feel threatened. Undercut banks are often a great place to look for big brown trout. Now in a stream like this, you've got some ripply water at the head and then you've got various little current breaks all through here. And there are some modest sized boulders scattered throughout uh, this stretch. Uh, this could hold dozens of smaller fish without any problem. And I typically, uh, you know, either fish this with a dry fly if there's a hatch going on, which isn't at the moment, uh, but also you can come in here with either a very small streamer or you can come in here with wet flies and do extremely well. Uh, I've uh, fished this stretch in the past uh, and literally, you know, gone into a dozen or more fish just going through a stretch like this. So even though it's bland and shallow, don't ignore it. Here we have a nice uh, slower run. There's a foam line going down it. This is a perfect spot uh, to drift a nymph. It's got some depth in there. 
Uh, it does have a bit of shelter uh, with that deadfall uh, a little bit further down and you've got plenty of room to swing a nymph, a wet fly or a stream. It'd be a great place for rising trout as well. Okay, here we see a, a kind of a typical situation where the that run starts to uh, slow down and the deadfall down there is creating a bit of a dam. It's causing the water to back up. So you get uh, this pillow or cushion of slower water just before the ripple. And you can have some nice fish sitting in there just in front of the ripple. And uh, they can sit in there quite comfortably picking off the food that comes down from this run. Okay, here we have a, a nice situation where we've got a fairly steep stretch of uh, water that is moving quite quickly, and yet we have that deadfall which is providing some slow water, and we're coming off that deadfall, and you see there is soft water on the right side of the end of that deadfall. You can often find a fish sitting right at the end of that, in the slower water, picking off all the food that's getting funneled to them because the current is being pushed by the deadfall and, and it creates a seam that will you know, bring quite a bit of bug activity down to the fish. Okay, here we have a classic big boulder uh, in the middle of the creek. Uh, shallow water all around it, but below the boulder it's actually a, a good foot deeper. And that's a perfect place to hold a trout, or two or three. They could actually, a small ones could be in front of the boulder, and you could have one or two big ones sitting in that current seam, the two seams that come off that boulder and go all the way downstream. That would all work perfectly. Uh, and you can be sure to find at least one or two fish in there in a typical stream. Okay, you can see that gravel bar there, and the water drops off uh, into much deeper water, and it hits that deadfall. This is a wonderful spot to pick up fish, because that deadfall creates, not only does it create shelter for the fish, it also creates a cushion of water. And in that deeper water, they can sit there picking off any food that comes across that uh, shallow gravel bar. It makes it a great spot, lots of cover for them, good current and some soft water to sit in. Oh, look at that foam right there with a deadfall right in front of it. And now we have a fisherman coming along. He's seen it too. And this is really where you uh, can expect to find some nice fish. In amongst that uh, edge of that foam, we've got current just coming off of that small deadfall underneath the pine tree. Uh, it's just an absolutely great place to find fish. And he's looking at it right now. <laughs> if he passes it by, he'd be a silly boy, and he looks like he's passing it by. Oh well, I'll come back and get the fish in there later. Now this is an absolutely awesome uh, bend here with the gravel bar on the inside. I would fish for this from the inside. Where I'm standing right now would be impossible to fish properly because you have all of that in front of you. But that massive deadfall, this one over here, provides all sorts of shelter for fish. Makes it very challenging to fish, however. Uh, you've got to come in here prepared to lose flies because you're going to lose a lot of flies on wood. But there's an off lot going on in here. And if we swing around, you can see how that nice foam line leads out past that deadfall. And that foam line is, is your ticket right there. That's where you want to be drifting your nymphs. Uh, I'd also come in here with small streamers and, and work close to the deadfall. Uh, that's another choice. Um, you've got sunken logs all the way through here, which will hold fish. So be prepared to, to work those too. And as I say, be prepared to lose some flies. You know, you, and I would start, if I was working with streamers I, and nymphs, I would be starting at that top end and working my way down. Uh, if I was contact nymphing, I would probably 
uh, be uh, more likely to work my way upstream. And look underneath. We should be able to just see that uh, right in front of me where that deadfall is, in front of that uh, large uh, tree that cuts across. There's a sunken log. And it's right on the bottom, and that's a great little current break for a fish to hide behind. So there's lots of structure underneath this run that will hold fish. And it pays to uh, do some scouting on the day with a high sun where, and some polarized sunglasses to come in here and stand on this high bank and spot all of these features. And uh, you know, you can see the creek continues out over there. You can see there's a nice little riffle just coming in off of that you know, current break there, just a collection of stones that it falls over. Beautiful spot to, to run a nymph in there as well. And I've caught fish through here without any problem. Okay, the creek is uh, relatively shallow up there, maybe a couple of feet deep and faster moving. And now it slows down and it gets much deeper because off to the left we have a very deep elbow pool. And this pool is a perfect place to shelter very large browns. Uh, this is quite deep, and it's quite large, and it's got lots of structure inside of it. And so what they would do is they would move up to feed into the shallower water and they, into this current flow right here. And they could feed through here without any problem at all. And if they saw something threatening, they would just simply slip down the current into the deeper water and they'll be perfectly safe. And I've actually seen them do that in this creek. They'll be up in the shallow water, but there will always be deep water downstream and they simply just turn their head and they just glide into the deeper water and they're perfectly safe. So if you see that situation where you've got shallow, faster moving water upstream of a deep pool, always look into the, the tail out of that faster water because it could be holding a big brown. Okay, here we have the full extent of that elbow pool that we were looking in from the other bank. And you get appreciation of the size of it and how deep it is and how slow it is. So it can be a challenge to find uh, you know, an angle to fish this correctly. But you know, this is where it pays to look at both sides. So you can see some broken up concrete uh, from back when there was a mill in this area. That concrete is a perfect place to stand and get a cast off. It also, when you've got uh, very high banks, like I'm standing on right now, you can, I'm about, oh, close to 20 feet off the water. So if you are uh, down a little closer to the bank, around there, if you knew how to uh, spay cast, you'd be able to get a cast off in that position. And that would be worth fishing from from this side as well. So when you're dealing with challenging features like this, Always look for other locations uh, where you can get in and get a cast out. And, uh, you know, especially if you can know how to spade cast or you can roll cast really well. You know, it'll make a difference in your fishing. Okay, fishing deep elbow pools like this can be quite challenging. And a lot of people look at this and wonder what to do with it because it can be quite slow, quite deep. And how I'd fish this is with a full sinking line and a weighted streamer. And I would work this first by going to the upstream side of the pool, and I would stand in the shallower water up there and cast into the deeper water and then retrieve into the shallower water. That is a, a good way to start working this pool, but that isn't the only way. Uh, the pool continues around, and we'll get past these trees, and we have shallower water up, that, water up that end as well. And I would stand in the downstream end in the shallow water and cast into the deeper water. And that way we get a presentation uh, in both directions with this pool of both upstream and downstream uh, streamer presentations. And where I have uh, the camera right now, I'm on dry land obviously, I'm not wearing any waders, I would be casting almost directly ahead. I'd fan out 
and cast in a variety of directions from uh, right to left and just work that as well. So we'll end up with three presentations in this pool. We'll end up with an upstream presentation, a downstream presentation, and a cross-stream presentation. But remember, you're going to need weighted flies and a sinking line to really do justice to this pool. Unless, of course, there's a hatch going on. Then you might get lucky. One last thing you could do with this pool, though, which is interesting. If you come here in the evening, as the, as the light is failing, uh, you could be using mouse patterns on the top of this pool uh, with a floating line. That'll bring up big fish. Okay, that gives you a bit of an idea of the type of water I would normally fish, and I'll give you some idea of how I might go about fishing it. As I say, I didn't bring a rod with me, no waders. I wanted to give you guys a chance to see uh, the water without the complication of me actually fishing it. We can talk about the water and talk about the approaches that we might use, the types of lines, the types of flies, and that sort of thing. Um, look for the types of places that fish can sit comfortably without swimming like mad, stay in current, and yet there's current bringing food to them. So whether they're underneath the current, beside the current, using a current break like a boulder or a log, uh, and they also want shelter, so they want deep water, they want uh, things like deadfalls, that sort of thing, foam. Anything that will give them top cover, that's great for them as well. So you remember, they've got to have food being brought to them by the current, but they also need shelter and they need not to be working too hard. Because let's face it, a little tiny bug like that doesn't give you a lot of calories, so you can't be swimming like mad in fast current just to get a little bug like that. So you, you need some current break, and it doesn't take much uh, of a rock to shield a large trout. So just keep that in mind that fish, you know, need that conveyor belt of food, they need shelter, they need deeper water for protection, they need both feeding lies and resting lies, uh, and uh, you know, things like undercut banks, you know, deep water, deadfalls, all those things give them the current they need where they can rest, and then they can move out into the shallower water to feed. So, I think that should give you a good start, so the next time you go to a stream, you know, look for these features, because, you know, you can guarantee there's a fish or two in there. Cheers.